Good morning or good afternoon, wherever you may be, or good evening or good night. This is Jen at Jen's Arty Inclinations, a place to create, share and play. Hello, hello, hello. So here we are. It's Defemerembera, day one. So the prompt for today is fluff, mason jar, and then the added animal is hedgehog. So here we go in my brand new book. It made me think, for some reason, of a specimen card. So I cut out just this little piece of brown paper, and that was just from some packaging. And here, I'm just doing a little tap to add on the bottom, and you'll see how this all comes together in a minute. Now, I like doing really simple tabs. So just these simple little rectangles that I fold in half and pop over, they look really effective. They're quite cute and inking around the edges, I feel like that gives it a vintage feel. All right, here's the mason jar. What I decided to do was use it as a tool because I had this beautiful mason jar. So I put some ink around the top and then I've sprayed some water. <laughs> I've got some water sprayed. I'm kind of trying to work out roughly where it will go. Uh, but it, you know, it's not meant to be perfect. And then I'm just squishing the jar down to make a nice rough circle edge around. And that's what I want to cut out as my little specimen window. So I put a little bit more ink down, sprayed a bit more water, and this is just the oxide ink and yeah, just squished it around that circle. And I love how that came out. And it was so easy just to wipe the ink off the top of the jar. So no problem, and I'll pop it through the dishwasher. You know, it's sort of gotten the right spot for where it will need to be, but it isn't meant to be perfect. It's meant to be art. It's meant to be, you know, look handmade. Now, this is what I decided to do to cut out the circle. This I learned from Kylie's Card Craft when she's fussy cutting and so forth, she often uses this technique where she just paints it with a water brush and then that makes it easier to tear. It is so cool. So actually, this was a really good way. I wanted it to have that rough edge and so I just used that water technique to cut out or to rip out the little circle. I love it. It gives that little torn edge. It's just gorgeous. And actually, my hedgehog sat in that window sort of almost perfectly. So I kind of guessed that really well. Woohoo, that's a bit of a fluke. I wanted a window and this bag from something that I bought was really the perfect size. It wasn't too flimsy, you know, so just use what we have. I think that's always what we try and say. That is what I used. Now, everyone, I have not measured... <laughs> any of these pieces. What I tend to do as my measurement is I'll measure to the materials that I'm using. So in this instance, it was the gorgeous freebie image of the hedgehog, that beautiful vintage image. Now, what I've done is I've used that as my base and then I've cut the little overlay, so the top of the flap or the top of the card with the window, I've cut that out to the size of that hedgehog, hedgehog image and then I'm cutting the plastic to the size of those as well. So, you know, it's just using what I have in front of me so I can see it. I find tape runner or double-sided tape is usually the best way to stick down your plastic Um you'll find it a lot more accurate. Now, by the way, as I said, they're freebies from Louise Heinzel and 49 Dragonflies, Barbara. So they did a whole set of little animals for us. And that's the little bonus that we find out what the animal for the day is when we watch their videos. And look, this is why you should measure because my tape actually went over the window the first time. So I had to then rub some off the plastic, but that's okay. I could fix it. So it didn't actually sit too badly on the hedgehog. I did kind of almost guess that perfectly. So yay for me. <laughs> See, no measuring. It, it works sometimes, not other times. But uh, yeah, like I say, if you measure yours properly, here I'm just sticking the flap down as you can see but if you measure yours properly 
You won't have the problem of having to rub glue off your window because you'll make sure that you've measured it so that you've got enough room at the top and bottom (laughs) before you do it. But I don't know. Uh, Sometimes it helps me discover new ways to do things. I love that creativity of just diving in. So that's me. I'm, I'm definitely more organic when I'm creating things. I really like to just play with what's in front of me and let my materials kind of tell me what they're going to do. Um, I can justify things till the cows come home, can't I? It's just the way I work. So I love watching people who are really precise and really, really good at measuring. I'm not so great at the technical. I only do it when I absolutely have to. (laughs) All right, so here is a piece of cheesecloth. Now, it's quite funny here because I sort of, it took me a while to actually think, I just need to get out my pokey teal, pokey teal, pokey tool to help me stick these things down. And I didn't think about it until a little bit further on. So silly me you know, that's how life goes. Now here I'm just adding bits of glue just to, you know, spread that cheesecloth out in the way I want it to look. So now you know why I did that massive big glue globule to the left of the window. It must have looked very strange when you watched me doing it at first. These are some little threads from some hessian that I cut up that for some reason, I still kept in my string drawer, string drawer, and so I thought they'd be quite cute. Now, while you're just watching me place these little pieces down and just fiddle about a little bit with my fluff, inverted commas, I just want to say thank you again, Louise Heinzel and Barbara, 49 Dragonflies. They are the lovely hosts of Defemeremba and... That's a cross between December and ephemera, but they make it really fun. They've got a fun prompt list. They've got some added bonuses, like they're adding an animal each day. They gave us those beautiful freebie printouts of all these vintage animals, which, oh my goodness, I just adore them. I know I'll be using them in every single one, but uh, yeah, Lovely. And there's a hashtag so we can enjoy each other's creativity if everybody uses the hashtag when you're putting them up. Now, just to let you know, I had these cute little flowers and they've got little seed beads in the middle. Aren't they gorgeous? So I just thought I'd add them just for a little pop of colour. And they're like a really rusty red. So they've almost given you a bit of a December influence in that. But it's not you don't have to do Christmas. It's just making ephemera. So you can do it the way that you want to. Now, the little number, I just stamped a whole heap of numbers on a long strip of paper that was an off cut off the edge of one of my pages. And I just cut out a piece of it to put down on here. So that was cute and added another little flower just to tie the composition of it together. So there is my little piece. Now, when I looked at it, I thought, yeah, that's cute, but I want to add some sewing. So I added some sewing across on the inside top there. And then I added a whole heap of sewing around the edge as well. So I really love how that just finished it off. Truly, I really, (laughs) I really love this piece. And I didn't want the white on the back. And so... I just used a bit of water and ink and that was just a lid of something that I had nearby. So I used that to stamp down. Nothing, you know, terribly flash. I just wanted it to look really grungy on the back there. So take, you know, knock back the white, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Not take off the white, just knocking it back. And then I just used, you know, my stamp pad to go around. I love how it's smooshed there, quite dark in some of the corners, obviously, because it's a bit wet and probably shouldn't use my stamp pad on the wet. But I, um, <clears throat> I'm i not very good at <laughs> looking after my tools. So there it is. Isn't he cute? So the next thing I have to do is actually just do a bit of decoration. As I said, there's the mason jar and that was the little hole. So that's how mason jar came into mine, using it as a tool. I wanted to just decorate the page that I was actually putting him down on. So I did a little bit of stamping in the background. I used the oxide inks because I knew I was going to use watercolour 
and I used two different colors, just a couple of different browns that I had. And I grabbed out my watercolors and I thought, yeah, a little green palette, a little blue palette. And I just splooshed and splashed. So that is all I did. I just splooshed and splashed as I felt like it, popped a few different colors in. I, you know, had the mason jar. So I used that as my water jar. So a little bit of green, a little bit of blue. There really isn't any rhyme or reason. I'm just trying to get some color down onto the page. And knowing that it lightens up, I realized that I needed to add a lot more color than what I might think, but I did want it to be kind of subtle in the background. Truly, watercolors, they just make it so easy. And when I did this book, I decided that I'd actually cut up some watercolor pages from just a really big, cheap, cheap pad that I picked up from one of the discount stores. So I used that to do my actual uh, pages in this book. So then I knew that they'd be able to take a bit of watercolor, but they're not too thick because there's still a nice little bit of show through that you'll see when I'm drying it off. So isn't it wonderful on the left there, how it's sort of got that ring in the green? I think I end up losing that, but you know, that's all right. It all just adds to the layers and that textured effect that we get. And then I loved bringing the blue in. Now, the blue that I brought in, I often bring blues in with my greens because in the Australian bush, so Grand Espresso is the first one I'm using, we get lots of blues in our bush. So that's why I often bring them in. So that same technique that I used with the mason jar before, and there's vintage photo, that same technique I used to stamp on my background. And oh my goodness, I just can't believe how yummy it looks. It looks so good. So, um, I mean, you might not think so, but you know, when you're just creating something, you really enjoy the process and you love how it turns out. Well, that's what happened with this one for me. So then I grabbed, I started making myself some ephemera folders. So this is my pockets one and I've got loads more pockets. I just haven't put them in yet. So these little stripy pockets were ones that I cut out of a masterboard and they act like a little bit of a tuck. So I thought I'll dry off my page. I figured those worked really nicely with the look of what I was doing. And also you'll notice when I dried off my page, to dry them off a little bit more quickly, dry the back of the page as well if you can because it will dry quicker. <laughs> it's like you're drying the surface of it on the top and then you've got to dry from the underneath as well. So I'm not patient. That's why I don't measure because I'm not patient enough. So that just made it a lot quicker and easier to dry. And there he is. He just slips into the little page. I think it is so cute and I cannot wait to do tomorrow. Now, don't expect a video out every day. I'll probably bunch them together. However, I'll try. I'll see how I go and I'll try and make them shorter than this first one so that you can follow through. Anyway, catch you on the flip side. Bye. See you for the next one. I'd love it if you could leave me a comment below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed what you saw today. And of course, please subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you next time. And in the meantime, keep creating. Enjoy.